Okay, we are now getting to a kind of exciting part of the project. Cutting hoses and leaking fluids everywhere. Woo! Uh, right here I have a valve that came with the kit. Uh, it has a ball inside there. You can probably hear it. And what this does is this only allows our coolant to flow the one direction. There's an arrow on there, so it can only go this direction. So basically, these two connections here go to the parking heater. And then this one, and flowing that direction, go to the existing coolant lines on there. So basically, uh, when the parking heater is running, it's going to suck coolant in through here to the heater, heat it, send it back to here and out here. So essentially, the heater is not in the loop when it's off, but uh, when it's turned on, it's in the loop. So what I'm going to do is take the existing hose that's off the back of the uh, our overflow, our reservoir here, which is this little pipe here. I'm gonna disconnect it at the back and I'm gonna connect it here and then, or excuse me, connect it here and then add a new little piece of hose from here to the back of that and hook these hoses up to here and here. So one of the next things I'm gonna have to do is cut those to length and put those on. And here's kind of a cool tool I've always liked for radiator hoses, a uh, Sears Craftsman Handy Cut. It uh, works really nice for radiator hoses and things like that to make good square cuts. Using uh, slip lock pliers make a handy tool for getting the uh, hose clamps on. Now, before putting this connector on the hoses, it's probably a good time to double check I didn't get the hoses uh, mixed up, because in this case, this side is the water intake, and this side is the water outflow. So I just want to make sure I've got the flow going out, and oh, they're crisscrossed. There we go. So our water flow is going to be going this direction, so now I can hook those up like that. Okay, that looks like something. Woo! I'm now going to remove the coolant line that goes to the back of the reservoir. And uh, theoretically, it's the highest point in the system, and it should not let coolant splatter everywhere. I do have a couple of paper towels handy just in case, but hopefully, it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, here we go. Hopefully, not coolant everywhere. Too bad. So I got the uh, return tube off the back of the reservoir. Seemed like the best way to do that was uh, prying uh, with a nice big screwdriver. I measured it. It looks like it's just a little tiny bit smaller uh, than the uh, hose that I've got going here. Maybe uh, one size smaller. Um, so I think I can stretch this over this connection here. Uh, so I'll give that a try and then I'll still need a short section of uh, tubing to go from here back to the reservoir. Just for comparison, here's a little cut piece of the uh, hose that came with the heater kit. It's pretty darn close. Um, it's a thicker tube, but the interior diameter looks just a little bit larger than this one. Okay, I was finally able to get that hose to get onto this uh, one-way T-connector valve here. Uh, mostly that took some heat and a little lubricant, but I finally got it on and had to use a different hose clamp. Now I want to take uh, a separate piece, see if I can get this back behind here and to here. Okay, this was challenging. I had the two hoses from the heater coming up through and around. And I've got those going to that T. Um, what's going into the T was the original um, 
connection going to the back of the overflow tank, that hose was just a little bit smaller. I was able to stretch it and uh, get it over that connector. I had to use a different uh, hose clamp. Um, you can see a little bit of a bulge, so I did stretch it right over. Um, and then I used a piece of the scrap uh, three-quarter inch radiator hose to go to the back of the tank. And really, just to make those all fit and uh, not kink a hose or anything, man, it was just a lot of um, stretching and twisting and everything. Um, it did help to use a little lubricant and a little heat to get the hoses on. Um, and I think what I'm going to do now is just fire up the, uh, the regular electric heater in the car and take a look at overflow tank here and just see if it's all um, uh, just the plain electric heater works as it's supposed to. Okay, I do see movement in the reservoir there and uh, they uh, call this a waterfall tank because uh, the coolant comes in at the top and then gets pulled out the bottom and as part of it you can really see the coolant moving around in there. And this looks like about the same flow that I'd normally have. Okay, we're just doing a test here, but it looks like we got ignition. Yeah, not sure how well you can see the exhaust on camera here. Steam coming out the bottom. Still some air bubbles in the line. This is just for testing, but that's good because I can see that the fuel is going. Got a little smoke here, unfortunately. A couple of drops of coolant that landed on the uh, um, the muffler and exhaust there. So that's going to smoke a little. So that's what that is. That's a couple of coolant drips. That should go away in a minute. But the coolant is really cranking through here now from the pump in the heater, the double hoses, that T in one way valve, and back to here. Really cranking away. So other than all that smoke coming out, at least I know what that is. It sounds like it's working. <laughs> 